I bought a setup from a sim racing pro and wanted to know, is Assetto Corsa Competizione actually pay to win? Will a bot setup make me quicker? And if so, by how much? It's time for an experiment. Let's find out together. I'm with that, welcome back to Overtake.gg, my name is Champion Joe, your average Joe in terms of sim racing and that's why I'm the perfect guinea pig for today's experiment. You see, ACC is doing quite well at the moment, the online servers are full, especially with low fuel motorsports and I think a lot of sim racers out there really enjoy the sim in its current state. And yes, there are new updates coming, I'm really looking forward to those, if you don't want to miss them, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for mobile notifications, that's really really important and also leave a like if you enjoy this video you know but back to the topic the most of you don't want to know anything about setups and i get that setups can be really hard to perfect and i think 95 percent of people can't get the most out of a setup me included which is why the default setups are so valuable especially the aggressive preset as it gives you a good base to work from. But the problem with them is that they aren't really that quick, which is why there's a whole scene on the internet where you can buy setups from, from pros, from guys that know their way around the setup menu pretty well. And you can bunk a lot of money into that if ACC is your preferred sim. But is it really necessary to buy such a setup? How much faster can it make an average player? And this is what we are testing today. I bought a sim racing setup from the Unicorns of Love, which is one of the bigger teams in terms of sim racing competition in ACC. If you want to see that setup and buy it yourself, I will link it in the video description. But they are claiming 216.202 on Spa, on qualifying. That's a ridiculous time. And I also saw a video of Charlie being two seconds quicker with bot setups from pros. So I wanted to find out if that is really the case. And I think I'm the perfect candidate for that because I represent basically an average ACC player. I'm not super fast, but kind of consistent with my lap times. So what's the test gonna be? I will pick my favorite track, which is spa franc and my favorite car, the Aston Martin GT3, a combo which I'm pretty familiar with, and I will drive two sessions. The first one with the aggressive preset, 30 minutes of driving, and then we'll see what my best time will be. Then we check out the Unicorns of Love setup, and drive another 30 minutes on the same track, same car combination and see how fast I can beat the previous best time with the aggressive preset or if the setup makes me faster at all. Alright, here we are in game. Let's uh, choose the aggressive preset as you can see. I won't change anything on the preset, just drive out like this. Let's do half an hour and see how fast I can go. Does the first lap even count? <laughs> First have to get into a rhythm of course, but that's why I chose the half an hour time span to get acquainted with the car, with the track, to find a rhythm and then be able to have like 10-15 minutes of hard pushing uh, and hopefully get near my best overall times like in the low 20s, maybe even a 19, that would be awesome. Marouche cut. <laughs> the problem usually with the default setup is that it's kind of understeery. So it's the aggressive preset. It's made for people that know how to maneuver a car around a track, but still Kunos decided to go for rather conservative uh, setups that maybe have a bit of play on the power out of a turn. It of course can be eliminated uh, with traction control, but overall are kind of stiff around um, slower to medium speed corner. So let's see, first push lap. Let's do it, breaking it 100. Let's get it turned in here in La Source. Not perfect by any means, a lot of slip. My 219 is already off the table, I would presume. Let's see, Au Rouge, Radeon. Oh, this will be a close one. Managed, barely, but I managed. <laughs> A lot of oversteer here again. Maybe I'm a bit too direct with my inputs at the moment. Have to find a bit more of a, a smooth transition of acceleration and also steering. Not the most precise drive. 121.6 uh, for the first lap. Not a good one. But I keep pushing. Let's go. And I really thought I would be much quicker with the default preset, but I'm struggling so hard to keep the, the car on the road. <laughs> 
Wow, so much oversteer on that exit. Holy moly. How am I supposed to push like that? Oh, I turned in too early. This should be the default setup. I don't know. Oh, bad exit out of the chicane. Again, 21, 2. Wow, that's so slow. Oh, come on. Stay between the lines. Oh, so hard to accelerate flat out out of this turn. Just because of all of those understeer. At least a uh, 220, 229, 5, 5. So I guess my best lap will remain a 229, 5, 5. <sighs> that was really frustrating, guys. Really frustrating. So before we move on to the paid setup, let's just recapitulate what just happened. This setup is really hard to drive. It is super understeery. It is super oversteery on corner exit. And overall, the balance of the car is it's just not right. So I think that the presets are for the bin. To be honest, maybe it's a good starting point to build your setup from there and learning setups, of course, is also a valid way to go. But just let's just remember when I'm driving with my setup, I'm usually in the low 20s. So let's see how the bot setup from the Unicorns of Love, one of the best teams out there, will change my driving performance. And let's see if I can actually crack under the 20 mark. And there we go. Let's load the setup. I will use this one. Okay, the setup is loaded and oh my god, I just had a look at it. It's everything that is set in the setup screen has nothing to do with actual cars. And it's nothing to do with actual sim racing. It's just exploiting the in-game physics. It's ridiculous. I would never set up a car like this. But hey, let's see if it will make me that much quicker just change the traction control to from one to three to feel a bit more comfortable with it everything else is stock oh my god the amount of grip i just had in this turn oh my okay i'm i'm really eager to find out yeah this is much easier i'm also fast on the straights you can see it on the delta i'm just quicker on the straights first turn and into the comp yeah, that's so stable. There is no rotation that I don't like. Oh my god. With the right driver, I guess setups like those are just OP. And I don't even know if the Aston Martin is kind of good right now or not. It's just my favorite car of the bunch. Just imagine a good driver, OP car with this setup. Just look at me. I'm driving the same... Um, line as before i'm talking while i'm driving so i'm not fully focused and i'm still quicker no worries of getting an off track here although i turned in way too late and i'm i'm quicker than before <coughs> without even concentrating the chicane was bad okay let's go for our first flyer oh again too late on the brakes <laughs> okay, this was a massive skill issue. It has nothing to do with the setups. <laughs> no, I was sliding a lot there. 223. Getting there. Yeah, I was sliding there again for a bit. You definitely still have to drive yourself. But you can focus on the car and the track. Or rather on the track and your line instead of just correcting car behavior that you don't want to see. I think with the right training, those setups can really be super strong. Close to 19. I, I think I can get it. Maybe the setup is not turning you into a sim racing machine, but it gives you enough confidence to chase your own limit. And that's why without such a set up especially in endurance racing you won't stand a chance over a long period of time you will do mistakes with a preset or a self-graded uh, setup because this setup i'm driving right now has nothing to do with what you usually would learn about setups it has to do with what is acc currently doing with its physics and how can you best exploit them 
I'm not saying that our uh, esports team are cheating or anything like that. It's the game. That's how the game works. That's how it's designed and that's how you get the maximum out of the game. So I'm totally fine with that. But for the average Joe, like me, it's not really too, too easy to accept that you basically, if you don't know those exploits, this knowledge will, will stay behind um, closed doors for you. And maybe you can get a good pace with your setup. But still, if you manage to get really good with the standard setups, driving this setup will make you faster at least half a second. That's what I believe. No, the bus stop! Too deep, too deep! No, I was four tenths up! Ah, oh, I wanted too much. I wanted too much. Last attempt. Yeah, this lab is not as fast as the last one, but hey, I'm still... I'm blown away how much fun this was now. Uh, compared to how frustrating the experience was with the with the um, default aggressive preset. It's like driving a different car. You have so much control over, over everything basically. And really can try and focus on, on your craft, on your racing. Of course a 2.19.7 or 6.32 which was my best lap is not what the pros are driving or what good players in ACC are driving but compared to how I managed to get the car thrown around uh, with the aggressive preset this is an, a difference like night and day. Which brings us to my final verdict for today. Is ACC pay to win? Kinda. I think you can still be a really good driver with not maybe the aggressive preset but self-made setups if you know what you're doing. But in the end, setups like those, created by the best drivers in the world that understand how the physics behind the game actually work and how you can exploit them, will always be the better call in the end. What about you? Have you tried setups from eSports Pros or setups that you've bought online? And how were your results? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm really interested in finding out. And if you are struggling with ACC, maybe those five tips can help you become a better driver when you are using the presets in the game. Well, that's it from me today. Thank you so much for tuning in and see you next time around. Cheers.